morning, everybody. I hope you are hearing me. And welcome to um, the orientation and academic advising for new students of the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Um, let me again use this opportunity to congratulate you for being admitted to the best university in the uh, Caribbean, the number one university in the Caribbean. Um, we have a long history of excellence. We have a long history of excellence. Um, the university is 70, 70 years old plus, and many graduates have been produced over the years. And there are many, many of your lecturers are even products of the university. So I will start by giving you the mission statement of the department, which is to provide an educational foundation upon which graduate engineers can build with further learning and experience in order to achieve higher professional status and responsibility within the civil engineering construction industry. And through lifelong learning can sustain their contribution to improving the quality of life in the society. And that basically sums up the role of a civil engineer in the society. We try to act with professionalism and responsibility to build, construct, manage systems, designs, structures, so that life will be better for the majority of the people in the society. Okay, so now um, we have to assist us and you in this. We have level coordinators who are responsible for the well being and academic progress of each of the levels. Level one, you have uh, Dr. Li Leon. For level two, you have Dr. Kailas Banerjee. And for level three, we have uh, Dr. Deborah Villarreal Lamb. So these are the lecturers we'll be working closely with. And particularly for the new students, take note of your level one coordinator. Now, I want to also tell you that in spite of the uh, problems in society, the advent of COVID and everything, the university has tried to keep up with the times. Um, your lectures will be online and your lecturers have had a long experience with this. I also want you to know that we act as your parents here. Yeah? All our lecturers are very responsible and matured people. And we are ready to take care of you as if you are in your house especially when you come in for the face-to-face -face aspects of your program. I also want to mention at this stage that there are a lot of exciting opportunities awaiting you. For example, the department has an established 
International Student Exchange Agreement with the University of Mainz in Germany. And at regular intervals, we have what we call exchange students. So if you are willing, you are also have the capacity, you can also go there for part of your um, credits. Um, there is credit recognition on both sides. So, um, so those are the different aspects. I'm sure as you go along, you are also going to see a number of benefits. Another benefit is that your degree entitles you to uh, function professionally anywhere in the world because you are recognized, you are accredited by um, international accreditors. And that means that with your degree, you can work anywhere in the world. And then you are also qualified to become chartered engineers. So those are the initial points that I want to make at this time. I'm sure by the time other members of staff come in, uh, they are going to expand on what I have said and uh, give you more details. So to proceed, what is civil engineering? I'm sure uh, most of you knew what civil engineering was before you applied. Um, and now in actual fact, environmental engineering is part of civil engineering, but we have taking it to another level here at UWE. So civil engineering is everything you see that has been built around you. It's a professional engineering discipline that deals with the built environment. So once you hear the word built environment, then understand that you are referring to uh, civil and environmental engineering. So what are the fields? We have different fields in civil engineering. You have um, you have the uh, structural engineering, uh, which is design and construction of structures under which you have buildings, bridges. Of course, there are so many other types of structures that come under this. Uh, for example, and then there is overlap between uh, the uh, fields of engineering. You have transportation engineering, uh, where you design, operate, plan, and manage transportation infrastructure. You have roads, you have airports, so you have railways, and so on and so forth. Um, briefly, you also have geotechnical engineering, which is the study of the behavior of the earth and application of this knowledge into design of foundations, retaining walls and earth dams and tunnels. So you have environmental engineering where you study water, air, and then the soil uh, properties, problems, and then you have to provide uh, solutions. You have water and wastewater modeling and analysis of groundwater quality disposal of solid waste. Then you also have as part of the, you have coastal engineering, study of the interaction between the sea and the land to provide engineering solutions. And a study of coastal engineering enables you to protect communities from the risks of coastal flooding and erosion. And you are very lucky, um, coastal engineering is part of our diet in the Department of Civil and uh, Environmental Engineering. We also have construction engineering. So here you design and execute uh, products, projects, buildings, maintenance, and then here you learn about management and how to plan and oversee the construction operations of a pro project. So this is not exhaustive. Again, you have um, fields overlapping for example, the geotechnical engineer is very important in virtually all projects. So for geo so the people in geotechnic engineering, you have to work with um, uh, other fields because 
uh, the soil, the earth, forms the basic foundation for whatever you want to put up. Okay, so uh, again, I've not mentioned I've not mentioned hydraulics, dams, and so on and so forth. But as time goes on, you get familiar with all the terms we use for our structures in civil and environmental engineering. I'm just trying to give a general overview of what you are to expect. So this is hydraulic engineering, design of hydraulic structures, erosion, flood protection, water supply systems. So having said all this, now I want to, what are the tools for success? Because you are just coming in and you need to be prepared. Um, many students, freshers, come into the university, they mismanage their time, they overplay uh, the freedom. Well, for now, you still be at home, basically, but um, assuming you are to come in as a fresher, it has affected quite a number of students. So the most important tools for your success are this. Try as much as possible to attend all your lectures attend all your lectures. In this era of remote teaching, uh, you are a little bit fortunate in the sense that um, at the end of every lecture, your lectures are recorded and at the end of uh, the lecture, you are able to go over whatever you have been taught once again. So I think that's one of the benefits of the uh, online teaching. Then a lot more is required from you in the university. This is not the college or secondary school where you are basically fed with 90% of what you need. Here, for one hour of lecture, be prepared to have three hours of study. But you, again, you are a little bit fortunate. Um, our lecturers in the department still tend to actually teach their courses that they try as much as possible to give you as much uh, material as possible so they are still basically teaching but please have it at the back of your mind that as a university student you are supposed to do more of the work is that clear because i've seen students thinking that um they have not been given uh, enough material. I was supposed to, you know, go online, you know, go everywhere, try to get books, additional books, additional material, okay, that will facilitate your understanding of the topics that uh, you have been taught, okay? Then you have to make use of all the resources available to you. Your lecturers will give you consultation hours. Um, the library, the Alma Jordan Library is there. You also have other university resources. And then you also have the internet resources. Okay? There are so many free books out there. So please try as much as possible. When you are given a particular topic, try and get as much material as possible on that topic. Then you also have to be organized, please. Be organized. Keep track of your assignment deadlines. Because now you are going to be faced with a lot of assignments with deadlines, and you are you'll be expected, you know, to keep to the deadlines. Okay? So please, you have to um, I would suggest that you get maybe a book, a, a small book, where you can be, you know putting down, jotting down the uh, assignments, details of your assignments, when are, are they due, and so on and so forth, so that you'll be able to keep track and then be able to submit at the appropriate time. And then the last two for success, please obey the rules and regulations set down by the university. The university has a number of rules and regulations. Uh, try and Familiarize yourself with the various handbooks, the faculty handbook, 
okay, university manual and so on and so forth, so that you know what is expected of you as a student at any time, point in time, either within the campus, outside the campus, and even outside uh, the country. Please try. You are supposed to be very good ambassadors of this university. So please, in behavior, degrees are not only awarded for academic excellence. They are also awarded for behavior. Please make sure that in all your behavior, henceforth, you show that you are a very good ambassador of the great university of the West Indies. Please. So these are the tools for success. And if, if you can keep to this, I'm sure at the end of the day, um, you are going to smile by the time you get your degree. So I want to thank you very much. And um, my email address is there listed. So you can uh, note it if you have any issues, if you have any uh, difficulties, or uh, any urgent issues, you can quickly write, send a mail to me. I, sorry, I did not mention my name at the beginning. I'm, uh, Dr. Festus Olutoge, and you can see festus.olutoge at star.ue.edu. Okay, so please, if you have anything as the head of department, please you can contact me. Although it will be easier for you to actually, the first level of contact for you is your level coordinator. And I'm sure as we proceed with this. Uh, orientation, uh, they are still going to also address you. So thank you very much. I welcome you and I pray that at the end of the day, you are going to graduate with outstanding success. So thank you very much. Dr. Banerjee, you could go ahead now. Yeah, thank you. Yes, so hello and welcome you all uh, to this small presentation on behalf of the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. My name is Kailash Banerjee. I'm a lecturer um, in the Department of Civil and en uh, Environmental Engineering. Now, our head of the department already told you about what is civil engineering, okay? But if you look at the slides, you can see there are many other things which are present, okay? Um, and that is also a part of the civil env uh, and environmental engineering discipline, okay? And I put on the slides to show you that civil engineering is not only about construct buildings or bridges, but in modern context of the climate change, uh, civil and environmental engineering plays a major role in the global challenges. And you know, Caribbean can possibly be the major victim for this climate change. Now, I want to give you an example from the recent COVID pandemic, which will indicate that we have a never ending need of this discipline of engineering. Now, during this pandemic, you have seen that there is a need for the foundations for global health, water, sanitation, and hygiene. And we all call it in short from WASH, W-A-S-H. And this WASH, this water, sanitation, and hygiene, this is not being adequately addressed in most part of the world, including some parts of United States of America also. Now, as civil engineers, we have an important role to play in supporting this in the situation, this global momentum, by improving these infrastructures, these wash infrastructures, which are very, very important for the healthcare facility. So you can see that the need is never ending and changing on a regular basis, okay? 
Now I want to show you a small clip of what is civil engineering. Oh, sorry. So now the thing is, if you have the effort that you are doing the your studies over here, but if you have the wrong tools, you will have no results. Now, what I want to mean by wrong tools is by saying that not pursuing your scope degree in a accredited program okay so why accredited program is important because to reach this peak professional achievements all you need is to become a chartered in civil engineer okay the title ceng is protected by the law as is the as it is the uh, title chartered civil engineer and is one of the most recognizable international engineering qualifications now what qualification do you need for becoming a png if you have one of the following you already have the qualification uh, qualification you need for CENG. One, an accredited four year integrated MNG degree or a bachelor degree which is accredited as CENG with further learning plus an accredited master degree. Now, in these two, okay? Now, why civil engineering at UE St. Augustine is important? Because we give you the second option, which is a bachelor degree, which is accredited as CNG with further learning plus an accredited, accredited master's degree, okay? So this is why we are important. And I want to stress in the fact that uh, the the JBM, which is the Joint Board of Moderator, which is the UK body 
of accreditation, we have that with our department. So the intake which is coming from to the, uh, from the from uh, our long history, since you are also coming, all are falling in this accreditation. So you are qualified to become an CNG after completion of our program. And what does it mean? It means that our programs are equal or similar to all these universities that you look here. So we are no, we, 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 we are in, in a higher level. So you came to a higher degree that is, that is quali uh, internationally recognized. So don't be afraid of anything, okay? This is the mission statement. Our uh, head of the department already spoke about it. So I'm not going to talk about that. I also want to give you a small history of, of the employment, okay? We, this has not been done in a regular basis, but uh, we did it by, from our department and um, we did it on a cohort size of 35 a few years ago. Um, and you can see that we have a quite high numbers of, a higher percentage of employed students, okay? So the, your, your future is also very, very good and secured on, on, on this matter, what, I, uh, what is provided by the department, okay? Now, the structure of the program. So we have two programs and you know about it because you are already registered um, as a student. We have two programs, BSc Civil Engineering and BSc Civil Environmental Engineering, okay? Both of them are accredited, so be sure about it. The duration is three years with the design and special investigative projects which are used as the capstone projects that will be undertaken at, the, at level three. When you reach your third year, you will be able to do those uh, capstone projects. Now, students from both the programs share same courses in level one and level two. Uh, the specialization... Uh, hello, I'm getting a background noise. Anybody uh, asking anything? Hello? Okay. So, at level three, the spe specialization starts, okay, where the students need to select two optional courses from a list of offered post courses from the department. And these optional courses consist of two separate pool of courses designed for civil and civil with environmental student, engineering students. This list of the optional courses is available in the faculty booklet or in the departmental brochure. You can get it from there. So this is about the overview. Now I want to show you a video or if I, I want to give you a virtual laboratory tour of the department, okay? So hold on. Welcome to the laboratory facility in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the University of the West Indies. This short presentation provides a virtual tour of this highly interactive and stimulating learning environment. All of these laboratories follow the American Society for Testing and Material Standards or British Standards. The structures lab. Structural Laboratory is located in the first floor of the Engineering Block 2, which is also a civil and engineering building. It has traditionally been used in the testing of structural systems like beams, columns, frames, and joints made of concrete, steel, timber, and masonry. It is significantly spacious and well equipped with an MTS machine that can perform both the load and displacement control testing, a strong wall, a strong floor, and a high frame. Loads can be applied both 
quasi static rate means at a very slow rate or at a more dynamic rate. We look forward to working with you in all structures lab and remember safety first. Thank you. Concrete laboratory is used for the physical and the mechanical testing of concrete. Concrete is a composite mixture of water, aggregate, cement, and sometimes additives. It is an essential material in the construction and building industry. This lab consists of a concrete mixer and molds to manufacture quality concrete specimens. This lab has the capacity to measure the consistency of fresh concrete using with slum test apparatus and compaction test apparatus. As we are talking concrete, we need to test the natural aggregates, which are mainly comprised of rocks and sands. Our geology lab, sorry, is well equipped with point load testing, which is capable of measuring strength of aggregates, while produced the logical microscopic analysis, capable of measuring mineralogical properties of aggregates. We have a well equipped soil laboratory. Our soil laboratory conducts soil testing, such as grain size analysis and hydrometer analysis. Attenberg limit test, permeability test, direct shear test, consolidation test, and triaxial test. Transportation is a very important part of civil engineering program. The Laboratory of Transportation and Highway Engineering in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering is well equipped with all the required instruments and equipment that are helpful in the overall understanding and practical knowledge of a student. We have all the instruments such as martial stability, CBR, asphalt performance testing, and we are proud that we are one of the very few labs that provide this facility. Apart from this, we also have enough other instruments such as traffic volume counter, traffic analysis software, etc. We believe in the fact that only bookish knowledge is not enough for the overall understanding of our students. So our teaching includes every measure that impacts practical knowledge and carries out all the tests required for complete understanding of the subject. Mechanics, mechanics is an important part for both civil and civil with environmental programs. The Fluids and Water Resources Laboratory is used for teaching the fundamental principles of fluid mechanics and for conducting research. It has several fluids and bench equipment for conducting experiments on the characteristics of open channel flow, sediment transport, and flow of fluids in pipes. It also has an array of equipment for monitoring of real watersheds, including several automatic rain four stations, water samplers, infiltrometers, stage and stream flow recorders. One main part of this program is environmental part of civil engineering. Environmental laboratory covers the basic principles governing water and wastewater treatment and show how these principles are involved in the design unit operations and processes for water and wastewater treatment along with the general quality of raw waters and the standards required for drinking water and for wastewater effluents. The laboratory is also equipped to deal with a variety of wet chemistry testing along with handheld and bench top equipment for analysis of environmental compartments. We live in coastal areas and it is important to know the coastal processes and wave mechanisms. The coastal group in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering is equipped to execute flannel and laboratory work related to the assessment and collection of oceanographic and morphological indicators. In terms of field data capability, the department is well appointed to measure wave and high characters water level data, data metric data, beach probes, 
meteorological data, long short current and coastal water quality parameters. The coastal laboratory has the ability to execute investigation using two dimensional linear and random waves. Control experiments related to bed beach changes, wave loading, wave current characteristics can be conducted in a 10 meter long coastal wave room, which is enabled with a state of the art wave generating facility to support field work. Computer is more than an essential equipment of all work life. Our computer lab provided core functions for students to do their research, creating technology, technology based projects, training specialized software providers, IT support, and printing services. Some of the computer programs our computer lab offers are MATLAB, AutoCAD, RGIS, SAN, Mike by Guide, CLUS, Abacus, and AIMSOM. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, there are some important links um, that I will also provide you in the chat box um, about the registration, academic calendar, and those things. So you can copy the links and you can uh, use them whatever you want. And with that, I want to thank you for listening. And again, welcome to the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering and have a nice time over here. Thank you. Kisha? Hello? Hi, yes. Um, Dr. Lee Leon, um, the level one coordinator, he could go ahead. You could go ahead and speak, please. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Lee Leon, the level one coordinator, uh, examination coordinator, as well as a lecturer in the department. Uh, my lecture is civil design, as well as civil engineering design, as well as highway and pavement engineering. So I want to welcome you to the department of civil and environmental engineering. Apart from the head of department, I'm also the member of staff uh, who is responsible. Who is the contact person, sorry, for to all level one students. So any concerns and questions that affects your examination or any other academic related issues, feel free to have a discussion with me via email or telephone. I believe that you will be given the relevant um, contact information for members of staff um, soon. I have a few tips for you, the new students, level one students, um, as you embark on this new journey, new and exciting journey. First one is please follow all the COVID protocols set by the government as well as the university. I know we are in a very uncomfortable time. We would like to be face to face, to, to meet new, new persons face to face. But for now, we, are, we have the virtual environment. So we have to keep, keep the faith and so probably by next semester or at the end of next year, we can all meet face to face. Next uh, tip I have for you as new students is when attending attend the virtual classes, please have a profile pic of you and not your friend or your dog or your a party pic. Have a headshot or passport type photo of yourself. So at least since we can engage face to face, we can still know who you are. And also log in with your full, your full name. Now, some lecturers might or may or may not require your video, but just in case they ask you to put your video on, please dress appropriately. Do not be in your dress or no shirt. Please dress appropriately. You should be pretending like that you are still in a face to face classroom. So you should dress appropriately for class. Also, I would like 
to tell you that, that you should get familiar with your virtual platform that we'll, we'll be using to communicate your courses. Um, and this platform we are using at the department, as well as most of the faculties at the university, is the Blackboard Collaborate. I will give a little more detail of that in a while. And as year ones, and as the head of the department said, you are no longer in a secondary school, you are now have to work towards your degree. So one of the most important things are deadlines. Deadlines are deadlines. So please respect the deadlines, submit your assignments or your examination on time. So you'll be given guidelines on submission as well as the time frame for submission. So please respect the deadlines and the dates given to you. Also, as you progress through the semester, I would advise that you develop some sort of time management skills, schedule assignments, your study. You do not want assignments piling up on you, and then you have to write the head, or you become stressful, or you have to write me and ask me for extension of time and so on, because of the poor time management time management. So please schedule your assignments. You will know what your assignments are. You will know the dates for submission of your assignments. You will have an idea of when exams are. I'm pretty sure that the academic calendar has been submitted to you, so you know when the final exam period is. So please do some time management and schedule your assignments and your studies. And I will also say that, yes, it's, we are doing the dealing with the COVID pandemic, but I would say make some time for yourself. So participate in some extra curricular activities. I know it's very hard to sit in front of a computer for three hours and go to the next class for another two hours for one hour. And you do not get some rest or some stretch time. So please try to put that in your schedule that you'll do some extra curricular activities. Because if you were face to face, they have usually with the Thursday afternoons are free for students. And this is where students participate in the extracurricular activities. So some of them do sports, they do theater and all, all other activities. So please put that in your schedule as well. So it's not only about books, but need some time for yourself to de-stress. I am also the, as the level one examination coordinator, I'm also the chair of the student staff liaison committee. And this committee has representatives from all levels, level one, level two, level three, or some, as some people call year one, year two, year three. And this committee discusses and records information on anything that affects the delivery of your courses and any other matters. So having said that, I would like for the year ones, I would like some volunteers. I only need two representatives, but I would like some names, some volunteers to submit a names to me. Um, if you are interested in not becoming the class rep or, and representing your, your class or your level on this committee. Um, I would like people from, it doesn't have, only have to be from Trinidad and Tobago, it, has, it can be from any other country. Volunteers can be from any, any country. So St. Lucia, Trinidad, Antigua, Jamaica, just feel free. Um, so send your names, email me your names. Uh, my email address is lee.leon at sta.dwi.edu, uh, put it in the chat. So feel free to, if you wish to be a class rep, just send me your name and your contact information. Just want to share my screen to give some guidelines in, in, for the new students in accessing my learning. I hope that everybody sees the screen. I also need information. Just can somebody just let me know. Yeah, we yes, can. sir. Okay, no problem. All right. So, to so the new students, your platform you're going to use for the delivery of the courses, and as well as accessing the content of your courses and information, um, notes and so on, is my learning. So. In order to log into my e-learning, you must first 
be financially clear. So you must register and be financially cleared to access my learning. You will not be able to access my learning if you are not registered. All right? So on the my learning, when you log into the mylearning.com or, or website, you will see staff and students. So you will have, you click on the students part of the, the student section, and it will bring you, it will ask you for your, sorry, for your ID number and, the, and your password. Now, this is the ID number you'll be using throughout your time at the university. And even if you leave and you have to come back a few years after to do masters, you'll be using the same ID number. All right, so you'll be given an ID number when you complete your registration. And then you'll be given the password. Usually the password is a generic until you, you have to change it. So your ID number and your password will give you access to my learning. Now to access the, the lecture, and as I previously said, we are, we are going to use Blackboard Collaborate to do lectures. So this is the icon for the Blackboard Collaborate, purple icon with two arrows. So you click on this item, this icon, sorry, and then you'll be able to log into whatever lecture session you have at the particular time that the, le the lecture is scheduled for. All right, so remember, you must log in with your student ID and your password. And then when you get to the course, whether it's, for example, CBNG 1016, Introduction to Civil Engineering, you look for this icon, and then you click on it, and then you'll be able to access the class, All right? So, um, as I said before, now you, you can also um, learn how to use Blackboard Collaborate, and you can just Google it, um, Google it or go on YouTube and type in Blackboard Collaborate, and it will give you an introduction to Blackboard Collaborate. Also, please note, as I previously said, that when logging into classes, have your, foot, your name, and if you are uploading a picture, make sure it's an appropriate passport um, type photo. No photo of yourself um, in a party or a dog or your family and so on. Photo of you, all right? So that being said, I, once again, I want to welcome you to the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering and feel free to when we come to the question and answer um, session that you ask the questions, if you have any questions, so we can provide you with the appropriate, appropriate answer to the questions. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, for some of you who may have missed, um, it's been a long session, um, it will be posted on our website. So in case you forgot anything or can't remember, feel free to go on our website and you'll get the full orientation, orientation session from this morning. Thank you. Okay, guys, um, I'll introduce you to uh, Mr. Cudbert David. He is the chief technician in our department. He will just speak to you, give you all a little summary on the health and safety rules of the department. Hello, one and all. Can you everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, hi, good day there, everyone. Um, welcome to the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Um, we at the department, we play a key and important role in terms of ensuring that the department um, obeys all health and safety that the university has put on in terms of regulations. So what I'll be explaining to you is how we actually go about in terms of ensuring that we have uh, health and safety as our number one priority in the department. Above all, we ensure that our students remain safe and in a safe and working environment. Now, the department has an, on hand, I don't have the video with me this morning, so I'll just explain to you what's going on. What the department has is that we ensure that 
Once there's an emergency that all our students are able to leave the department in the safe and proper manner and ensure that we reach the master point before anything else takes place. So we have an alarm system that we have developed in the department where we have blasts, we have a fog horn that blasts, um, noises to um, ensure that all the safety wardens are aware that there is an emergency and that they need to clear the building itself. So we decide we have um, safety wardens on each floor and they are the ones that are going to ensure that all rooms are cleared in the department. So they go around from room to room. They have a special way of walking around um, the quickest way and they clear each room by informing everyone in the room that there's an emergency and it's time to evacuate the building. Once this has been done, you um, as students in the department uh, to take your responsibility now and ensure that you get up in the quickest manner and head to the master point. We ask of you not to run or use any of the elevators in the department. So there are two stairways, one located at, located at the south side of the building and one on the northern side of the building. Whichever one you're closest to, you take your time. You can leave, uh, take your very important essentials, for example, let's say your cell phones or your laptop, because we don't want anyone to come and report that these things have been stolen. But things, for example, like um, your book bags and things, once nothing is important to it, you can leave it behind and you make your way down to the closest staircase. Once there, on the northern side of the building, you make your way around the building. On the southern side of the building, you start ahead in a southeasterly direction. So once you on the northern side and you go around the building, you now proceed in a southeasterly direction and head to the master point. The master point, when you're on campus, is located on right behind JFK parking facilities. So there's a green area that is like a field that you head to. Once there, you await further instructions. You can mostly stay with the group that you're with. So for example, if you're in a classroom, it's best that you stay with that class and ensure that you keep in contact because most likely, for example, let's say there are about 20 students in that classroom, we want to ensure that all 20 students are accounted for, that no one has left that area. So it's like a body system. You're ensuring that the person that you're next to is on the field and is in a safe, safe area. We ask of no one to jump in their vehicles if anyone is coming with vehicles or go home at that point in time because we want to account for everyone to ensure that when security or let's say the fire services arrive, that they know that everyone is accounted for. Okay, so thank you very much. I'll hand you back over to Keisha. Okay, now um, we will give a gentle introduction of the staff members who are here. Um, Lee, I don't know if you want to start again to just give yourself an introduction. Dr. Lee Leon. Yes, no problem. Good morning, students. Um, as I said previously, I am Dr. Lee Leon. I am a lecturer in civil, and civil design too. So um, I do not lecture to year one students. So I lecture to year twos and year threes in the area of civil design, engineering design, highway engineering, and the elective, which is pavement design and management. So once again, thank you for coming in and uh, being part of our department. And we look forward to having you for the next three years. Thank you. Okay, um, Dr. O'Brien Delpesh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shamin O'Brien Delpesh. I'm a coastal engineer by training. So I'm the program coordinator for the coastal in engineering and management program. So I would not be in contact with you until probably you start your level three, 
and you're doing your SIP or your design project, or you come on to do the MSc in Coastal Engineering and Management. So um, do enjoy your stay in next three years here. All success. Thank you, Dr. Delpesh. Um, Dr. Villarelam. Good morning, everybody. Um, um, my name is Deborah Lam. I'm a lecturer specifically in coastal engineering. So you will get to see me only if you do the option in one in, in year three or in level three. Um, but um, I just want to welcome you all to the department. Hope you have a, a good and enjoyable experience in spite of the COVID-19 situation. Hopefully we'll get to see you all in person soon. And um, for the moment, just enjoy. Um, the time and enjoy the learning as you go through and start on this academic journey. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Lam. Um, Dr. Javanka Smith. Good morning to everyone. Um, my name is Javanka Smith. I will be interacting with you um, in levels one, two, and three. I'm a part of the structures group. Um, I look forward to seeing you all. Welcome to the department. And uh, good luck with everything. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Um, Dr. Kailas Banerjee. Yes, hello. Uh, good morning and welcome you all. My name is Kailash Banerjee. I will be teaching you level one, level two, and level three, all the levels. I'm also the um, your special investigative project coordinator. So definitely we are going to meet in level three, but for level one, I'll be meeting you next semester with, with the geology. And in level two, I will also meet with you in engineering hydrology and also for SIP design too. So welcome you all and have a nice time over here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Banerjee. Dr. Vincent Cooper. Hi, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the department. My name is Vincent Cooper, and I lecture in mainly environmental engineering and water resources, along with my colleague who will introduce himself soon. I would not be teaching you until level two, and I will continue meeting with you in level three so that we can work towards solving this particular very important problem in Trinidad and Tobago and in fact in the rest of the Caribbean, namely flooding. And I hope that by the end of your three years, you would realize the importance of civil engineering towards solving flooding in particular, uh, flooding, but not only flooding, but also the other problems we have in the society. Take care and I enjoy, I would enjoy, I look forward to meeting you all in person um, as soon as we get over this pandemic. Thank you, Dr. Cooper. Um, Dr. Moasha. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Abrams Moasha. I'll be teaching you the following. In level one, I'll be teaching you science of material and introduction to civil engineering. And in level two, I will teach you concrete technology. And in level three, uh, I'll be teaching you building services engineering. This is an optional course. Thank you very much and welcome. Thank you, Dr. Moasha. Um, Dr. Richard Clark. Good morning, new students. Welcome. How are you going? Well, things are a little interesting across the Caribbean. No need to tell you that. It's probably going to stay a little bit more interesting. Um, something I need to mention, many of you would not most likely have completed your registration by the first day of lectures, which is in 13 days time. Do not panic, right? Although you won't be able to directly log in to the Blackboard Collaborate system that uh, Dr. Leon mentioned earlier, you will be invited to participate as a guest. So a link will be sent to you so that you can still be there. Okay, so don't worry if in 13 days time you're not ready as yet. I lecture in uh, structures and part of the structures group specializing in earthquake and hurricane resistant design. As Dr. Cooper just mentioned, we have certain 
resilience challenges in the Caribbean that you will help us solve. Uh, I teach at levels one, two, and three, beginning at four minutes after 10, 13 days time on your first day of lectures, where we start engineering graphics along with three assistant lecturers. Um, so, welcome again. Keep safe and remember that if you're not register, if you're not completed your registration as yet, don't worry. You will be sent a link so you can uh, participate in your different lectures. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you, Dr. Clark. Um, I'm not seeing um, Dr. Park or Professor Hazi online, so. I will introduce myself. Um, my name is Keisha Jordan. I'm the Senior Administrative Assistant. Um, you all will, would have been seeing emails coming from me. Um, I provide support to the staff of the department as well as students. Um, my advice to you all, please, pay particular attention with regards to registration. Um, payment of fees is very important because you would not be able to access any services from the university if you do not pay your fees. Um, yet again. Um, just one thing. Um, yes, yeah, so if you have any problems, please feel free. We have an open door policy. Please feel free to contact me. I know we can't see each other face to face, but please feel free to contact me. Myself and the secretary, Ms. Alyssa Valentine, she's not here today, but please feel free to contact me. Um, from September, I know you all are encouraged to use your UE ID. Please start to use that um, UE ID. Um, UE email, sorry. You're very much encouraged to use the UE email as in the past they had some real difficult times with personal emails. So please use your UE email to contact me. Um, with regards to the Blackboard, I will send you all the information. I will send, I will send this afternoon, I will send all the information. So according to Dr. Clark, do not panic. Everything will be okay so um yeah um enjoy your studies it's going to be tough it's going to be hard but at the end of the day enjoy your stay for the next three years here thank you um if anyone have any questions you're free now to to open your mic uh, kisha. hello hi kisha hi yeah uh, I have one more information to share with them. If sure, you, um, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't know uh, how many of the level one students doesn't have any CXC chemistry. Um, can you, if, or, or if I say those who has, doesn't have any CXC chemistry, can you raise your hands? Anybody? Okay, I'm seeing one, um, two, three. Four hands are raised. Okay, four hands. Okay, so uh, what you need to do, uh, first intimate the department. So send an email to our admin who just spoke to you, uh, Ms. Uh, Keisha Jordan send an email mentioning that you didn't possess the CXC chemistry. Um, and then you also need to contact the deputy dean um, of undergraduates, uh, Dr. Griffith Charles, or her department or, or, or her uh, section uh, mentioning about your uh, issue. And I think they will guide you. But what I know that you need to uh, do a course maybe with the Faculty of Science and Technology or maybe the CSEC outside do a uh, chemistry course during, the, during your level one. So please contact the uh, Deputy Dean, um, Dr. Griffith Charles, 
send an email and intimate that email to the uh, or copy that email to uh, our admin assistant Ms. Kisha Jordan. Is it clear? Those four I'm seeing: Tariq, Stefan, and Nathaniel. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any students have any questions they would like to ask? Hi, Keisha. Can I just introduce myself? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Kabir David. Oh, I'll leave you out. Again. <laughs> That's not a problem, Keisha. I know you were really busy. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm the chief engineering technician for the department. Okay, so what does that mean? That means my job basically is to oversee the running of all nine laboratories that we have in the department. So the work that you're going to be doing over the next three years wouldn't only be theoretical, but there will be a lot of physical work taking place also in terms of you'll have a physical understanding of what goes on behind the theories. So we have all laboratories set up with online discipline so that you can be able to understand what is going on. So my job is to oversee the running of those laboratories. So we, I ensure that they are managing, the managing, the training, any troubleshooting, calibration of equipment, everything that needed for those laboratories. That's my job. Additionally, I assist with the computer and structures laboratory because of my experience I have with those laboratories in terms of testing and uh, teaching laboratories there. So you'll be seeing me basically over the next three years because every single year, there will be some sort of lab taking place in the structures or concrete laboratory. And as you see, my job also is to assist with health and safety in the department. That's why I was asked just five minutes ago to give a little update on terms of us in the department. But my job is basically to ensure health and safety of each and every one in the department as we go along. So I would, I would like to welcome you all to the department over the next three years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. David. Um, yes, as I was saying, if anybody have any questions, please feel free. I know you all may be shy. Okay, well, um, I will put you all back to um, our head of department, Dr. Uh, one more second, sir. Sure, sure, sure. I have a question in the chat. Do you need to do chemistry in both CSEC and K level? Dr. Banaji? Yes, me. Yes, me. yeah, because I, I feel they want to know whether if they did CSEC or K, whether they still have to write to the uh, deputy dean. So that's what yes. I yes, they need to send an email and copy that email to the department. But I think it is uh, they, the students has to organize the course by themselves. Department will not do that or the faculty will not do that. They have to contact the FST or they can do it outside uh, in, in, in the in, in this um, in the CSEC. Right. I guess that answers this chair's um, question. Yeah. Keisha? Keisha, tap okay. here. I see some hands up. I don't know if they want to ask a question. Brian, Payne, Anna, Joanne, I don't know if they want to ask a question. When Dr. Um, Banerjee was asking who has the chemistry, I think those hands were up. Oh, yes. At that time. OK, no problem. Hi, um, no, look, Brian. Oh. <laughs> I actually have a question that I'd like to ask. Sure, Sorry. go ahead, sure, no problem. So last week at the faculty orientation, it was mentioned that international and regional students may have to come into Trinidad to do labs and online exams, but we were told that would be given an update um, in this orientation, but I haven't heard any mention of that. Because um, for example, I'm not from Trinidad, I would have to fly in, but 
throughout my registration process, I was told that the class is, well, everything would be online. I wasn't told that I have to come into Trinidad. So um, how will that issue be solved? Do I have to find to Trinidad? I, okay. Keisha, can I take over? Sure, you can go ahead. Okay. So I was just coming to that. Um, the last uh, information I have on this um, is that we maintain the status quo as per last academic year. I just got this. All lectures and tutorials should be offered online. Now, all labs which can address the learning objectives via online should also continue in that mode. Okay? So, we are necessary. We are necessary now. That's where necessary. We should run lab workshops, field work, face to face with the necessary COVID 19 protocols. So, the point is that we are, unless it is compulsory, we are, it is not mandatory to do face to face labs. Okay? So, we are told to maintain, still maintain the status quo. That is what we did last year, which was online labs. Now, with respect to face-to-face -face examinations, these examinations are not going to come up until November, late November stroke December. So, and before that time, we'll, we'll be monitoring the situation. If, if it is required that you come for face-to-face -face examinations, then definite provisions will be made for that, okay? And depending on wherever you are, it is actually possible for students to write St. Augustine exams in certain other locations, which is also being explored. So, but be rest assured that whatever decision is taken, is going to be to the benefit of all students, both local and international. So as the situation currently is now, you can still assume that everything will be online as the situation is now. But again, the situation can be very fluid. Things can change within the next two months. So you also have to be prepared for any eventuality. But note that you will not suffer any penalty for whatever decision is taken. You will not, everybody will be taken into account. Because I, we got a mail from some a student in Antigua. So please be rest assured that there will be no problem, whatever your location is. You are our students. And we are duty bound to take maximum care of you. Okay? So that is the situation. We continue with online at the moment. Okay? And if things change, of course, you'll be duly informed. So that is the answer to the question as at this point in time. Are there any questions? Yeah, any further <laughs> questions? Or are there any additions from members of staff? Any comments? I see Anna. Sorry, here. Um, this is Deborah again. I see Anna and Joanna still say they have questions they want to ask in the chat. Um, so I, I don't know if they want to ask it now. Anna, let them ask. Hi, Hi good day, everyone. Um, so I was wondering because I went onto the registration website and uh, all the level one courses, the times I see are either 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. or to be announced, and I don't see the dates. And I know when I'm um, registering for your courses, you have to take, make sure they don't clash or they answer at the same times. But all of them, either 12 to 1 p.m. or to be announced with no days, so I'm not sure which ones will not clash or not. No, your lectures, your lectures will not clash. Don't be bothered. 
the most important thing is get the courses listed and registered. That is the most important thing. We okay. the there is a timetable uh, committee, or there's a some there are, there are people in charge of the timetable who are going to take care of you. Lectures will never clash. Don't worry about that. Okay, that is so, you, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one I select, right? Um, let me let me just okay. a bit. Um, Ed? Yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah, so basically, I'm I'm really academic advising one time. So good. you will have, very good. You will have semester one courses to register for. So you have I'm not putting everybody on the screen. So you have five courses to register for. CDNG one thousand five, science and materials. CDNG one thousand nine, engineering graphics. CDNG one thousand and sixteen, introduction to civil engineering. CDNG 1013, Doctor Engineering Mechanics, and CDNGR 1180, Engineering Mathematics 1. These are courses every year once you learn must register. So you cannot say you're registering for two and take a next two or next three next year. You have to register for all. And when you register on the registration platform, you will see SO1 and SO2. You only register for SO1 courses. Okay. CDNG 1005, SO1, you see SO1 option. CDNG 1009, SO1, and so on. So SO1 courses, and you are registering for these five courses there. The timetable um, will be sent to you those, for those who are not received. There will be no clashes with your courses. So in terms of registration, do not worry about the clashes of, uh, of, of courses. This will, this will not happen. Your, your timetable will be submitted to you. You will know what times you have to go to the class. Whether it's virtual or face to face, there will not be no clashes of, um, of your classes. Okay? So that, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. No problem. Thank you, Dr. Leon. Any other questions? Me excuse me. Again, there's a question in the chat. I don't know if you want to reinforce for Ricardo. He wants to know if there'll be any other opportunities to interact. Um, concerning advising for registration of courses. I know you just did some, so I, I don't know if you just want to emphasize what you said earlier um, with contacting. I, 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 I think we have given out uh, sufficient information. You are free to contact any of us at any time. I receive mails all the time. And if I cannot attend to it, I will definitely push it on to somebody who can attend to it. So there is no problem. If you, even immediately after this um, advising, if you have any, or you remember something that you wanted to ask, you can quickly send a mail to either your level one coordinator, the administrative, senior administrative uh, uh, person and or myself. So we are there. You know, we are here because of you. So definitely, whatever comes up, we'll, we are ready to, you know, get it done for you. And just, just to reiterate ahead, um, you only register for semester one courses. Every semester, you have registration to do. So you do not, do not register for semester two. You only register for semester one. After the completion of semester one, for your new semester, you will have to do registration. Mm -hmm. All right, so only for semester one, you ready to go? You ready to for semester two? Okay. I hope that is very clear. Uh, if I may add, mm. here, uh, the students need to be reminded that they have got to know the university's booklet on the faculty inside and out. Yeah. You must know that like the back of your hand because it forms your contract with the university. All right, it is the faculty booklet. Everything is in there, the regulations, the procedures, and so on, most of them anyway. And it is a requirement. At your case, in your case, it is very easy in terms of registration. You simply have to register for all the courses you see there listed under semester one, as Dr. Leon just said. But it is critical that you must know that book inside and out. It is your contract with the university, all right? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Clark. I believe in my welcome address, I briefly mentioned this. 
please um these books are online these booklets are online or they will be online if not online already so please go through them and make sure you understand them as advised are there any other questions Okay, in the absence of any other questions, I want to thank everybody for coming. You have a question? Okay, go ahead. What was the email or your set message about the chemistry passes? Yeah. What was the email? I will send it. I will send it to any group. Any group. Chat. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, any other questions before we close? For um, a student, um, Cheryl Danrad, she asked, mm -hmm. will a list of starting materials be provided for each course beforehand? List of starting materials. I'm guessing no, I or anything like mm -hmm. that. No, yeah. no, no, no. I don't think so. I think um in the very first class oh, okay Le dr leon answer that yes um every course will have its own uh, material needed so when you have a first class usually it's an introductory class so the lecturer will inform you what is it what is required and so on so you will get more information on course. all right thank you and that starts with the first class, from the first class, introductory class. And I, and I believe the first class is on the sixth of uh, September. 30th or 6th? The 6th of September. 6th, not 30th. 6th yes. of September. 6th of September, please. I will resend the timetable to the students as well as the academic calendar. Please take note of that academic calendar. It has deadlines. Um, yeah, I will, I will send over these stuff to, to, to the students. Please, as I said, if any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you, Admin. Any other questions? Any other comments? Okay, so um, you can continue to interact with us online via mails. And subsequently, by the time you interact with your lecturers, you get their phone numbers. So uh, that you can contact, contact them. Um, Again, let me again this opportunity to welcome you and wish you um, an enjoyable and successful stay um, in the University of the West Indies. Thank you for coming. And we are also looking forward to see you, seeing you face to face when the pandemic ends. Thank you for coming and God bless you all.